friends, it's Miss Erin with another fun science video about something that happened last week. Since we can't be together, I thought it'd be a good thing to talk about this week in my video. So last week on March 19th, which was Thursday at 11.50 p.m., which you were probably asleep, and I hope for your parents' sake that you were asleep. I know, I was asleep in my bed. Something happened, and we're excited about this change, and we're going to talk about what's going on and what it means. But on Thursday, the vernal equinox happened. What does that mean? Well, first of all, it's an interesting word, vernal equinox. It just means spring is coming. So technically, March 19th, last week, was the first day of spring. So what happens with the vernal equinox? We need some things to talk about using some tools to talk about this. So during the vernal equinox, the sun has changed its position. We used to be in winter, and now we're in spring. And how do we know when it changes is by the vernal equinox. And I'll show you what that means. A lot of my friends have seen me use this in times when we've been together. It is not the real earth, but it's a model. It's shaped like it, a sphere. It has continents on it, and we can use it to study and model things like the earth. So let's find ourselves on here. We are right here, United States, and here's our red star that I put on there to show where we are by the ocean. Now the earth is a sphere that has an imaginary line that goes through it. And I'm gonna write this word down because you'll hear this word over and over. And this imaginary line is called the equator. It's not a real line and the earth's not really cut in half. But the equator is an imaginary line that we put on there to help us know where the halfway point is. See it right there? It's like in blue. Kind of goes around the sphere. And if we were to cut it in half, we would have an equal top part and an equal bottom part. And they kind of stuck together. So that equator is an important marker on Earth to know where the halfway point is. And based on where we live, here's your equator we live above the equator. So we live in the top half or the northern hemisphere of the globe. Now this becomes important because in the vernal equinox is happening when the sun and the earth meet, the sun crosses over at the equator. So it had been further away from us for winter. It was cooler here for us, less sun, colder temperatures, less daylight then the sun is now coming and cross that equator on Thursday at 11.50 p.m. We're sleeping, right? We didn't know it happened, but then it's starting to get warmer up here. So the vernal equinox is when the sun crosses that equator. And because the sun looks at the earth and crosses that equator, we get the vernal equinox or the first day of spring. Now, the earth has a little bit of a tilt to it and spins on its axis like that, rotates on its axis like that. So this is why changes start happening. Now, on that vernal equinox, we had equal parts from that day forward, on that day of equal sun, north and south, equal dark, north and south on that day. Going forward, because spring, we will get more and more daylight through the day. The days get longer from this point on which is something that we like to hear about and something that we like to know is coming. I know I'm ready for sunny days and warmer temperatures, all right? Because sometimes we can go outside after dinner and play. We can't do that in the wintertime because it's too dark and probably too cold. It's not as fun to do it when it's more daylight and more sun. I'm starting to already notice a lot of signs of spring outside. Have you noticed signs of spring? Have you been using your science tools and noticing signs of spring outside? Are you noticing pretty flowers and trees are starting to get their leaves and blossoms? I'm really starting to notice it with my nose because I might get sneezy a little bit. And that's one sign that spring is coming. Another thing we might notice is we might notice the temperatures are warmer and it's sunnier. Now today it's a little drizzly and rainy today. But going forward, and I think the rest of the week is supposed to be pretty good. So we're excited about that 
and having warmer temperatures. We don't have to wear those heavy coats and snow boots and mittens and gloves. And especially as spring gets closer to summer, we need even less of those coats and jackets, which is nice. You might start seeing some bees and insects flying around, visiting plants and blossoms, doing their job called pollination. This becomes very important when we like to eat the delicious foods that come out of our garden later in the spring and in the summer. And I'm very happy to see my friends doing their jobs. We like to protect them and not be angry at them or try to try to kill them or get rid of them because we need them. It's very important to having delicious foods to eat. Now, we also notice that we have start seeing some animals getting busy. Now, my friends that I've been with for a while know there are two things that animals do during the colder months. One of them is hibernate. They take a nap, don't they? They take a nice warm place and make a nice fluffy bed. They pack it down and they hibernate. They take a nap through the colder temperatures. They don't wanna be outside. They can't put on a winter jacket, so they hibernate. They're not getting up to watch TV or to get anything to eat. They're sleeping for a long time. Their heart rate slows down, their breathing slows down, and they stay asleep for a while. Sometimes animal friends decide not to hibernate and they move their body. So for example, some birds, the worms have hibernated, which is worms is a food source for, for birds, so these birds move their body to another location. They do something called migrate. They move their body to where there are food sources and warmer temperatures for them. So they migrate. Now that we've had the vernal equinox and the first day of spring, these temperatures are starting to change. Animals are starting to wake up from hibernations and animals that migrated away are starting to come back. So you might start seeing and hearing some friends being outside, being around, looking for snacks and foods and hearing them chirping and talking. And we might start seeing some animal babies too. So this is an exciting time for spring and all these animals start coming alive all around us. So I thought it'd be really fun to talk about some couple of things that we could look at for spring and leave you with some activities to do. One of the things I like to do for spring is to talk about how the sun because of where we are and it had crossed the equator, we're getting closer to the sun and that sun can really harm our skin if we're not careful. And I wanna show you an activity that can show you how that actually happens. So I actually have a little sheet that has some shapes on it. Let me show you what else you need to do this. So you can either draw them or print out some shapes and you can do large and small, rectangles, circles, diamonds, triangles, whatever you wanna do. You cut them out. So you're gonna need some scissors and you're gonna need some tape. And you cut those shapes out and you put it on another piece of paper. I like to use construction paper, especially a nice bright color for the background because it will really be able to see the difference. So what I want you to do is take this construction paper and put it in your window. Put the shape side out like that and I use a piece of tape to hold it in the window. And you can still see the shapes through, but we're gonna leave it there. <clears throat> I have a sample to show you what happens if you leave it there on a sunny day, especially maybe tomorrow, but it, it won't be a change today. If you leave it there and maybe check on it in a day or two, and you pull your shapes off of your red paper, you're gonna see changes in the red paper. Now, these darker shapes are where my cutout shapes were taped to it. So I had a rectangle here, a square here, a diamond here, and a circle there. When I took the shapes off, that showed what had happened where I had not put any shape. The sun had changed the construction paper color and the shapes blocked that sun from hitting that part. So this is kind of like how sunscreen or sunblock works on your skin when you're outside, at the beach, or at the pool. This is why it's important to put it on because these changes are hard to see when they're happening. I didn't know they were happening, but they really do happen. It makes a change, doesn't it? The other thing I thought would be cool to investigate, <coughs> excuse me, would be the clouds. 
And clouds are very interesting. There are so many clouds to talk about, and it's a way to kind of look and predict weather and what the day is gonna be like. But I thought it'd be really fun to make a little cloud chart. So what I did is I took a piece of blue paper, blue construction paper, and I kind of cut it into thirds. And what you need for this is you need some glue and you need a cotton ball. And you take your cotton ball and based on your clouds, we're gonna talk about three basic clouds. We're gonna talk about stratus clouds, cumulus clouds, and cirrus clouds, and what they kind of look like and they kind of, the weather they kind of predict for us. So your first clouds, it's gonna be right here on my paper. Your first cloud is gonna be your stratus cloud. And your stratus cloud is what you kind of want as a layer around on the, on the sky. It means that the drizzly day is gonna be around for a little bit today. And that's kind of what I got today. There's kind of a blanket in the sky. I just kind of pulled my cotton ball apart and just kind of made little blankets in the sky. <coughs> Can't really make shapes of any of the clouds, but I know that they're the stratus clouds. It's a drizzle and it, the sky is kind of covered. A second cloud I want you to talk about is the cumulus cloud. And our cumulus clouds are those big puffy clouds that mean a nice day. We can look at them and kind of see shapes when we look at the sky and see these nice clouds. We're happy when we see these clouds and we'll probably see some of these later this week. The third type of cloud is the cirrus cloud. And the cirrus cloud looks like feathers and kind of just unrolled my cotton ball and laid it on a strip of glue on my paper. These are wispy and they kind of mean that a change is coming. A change is on its way. So you can make that on your paper and then think about the clouds and what they mean when you look in the sky and what you think is gonna happen with the weather. So I'm leaving you with the sunblocker experiment and the cloud chart to make. And I look forward to seeing you have fun with this, take time to use your senses and evaluate the changes that happened with the vernal equinox, and I will see you next time. Bye.